working class. Capitalism is a deadly vampire that feasts on the blood of the working class. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that for me? Um, I don't really want to right now, but like, because like, do you, do you have an, do you have an iPhone? I was, yeah. So you're you're feasting on the blood of the working class. How dare you? Yeah. I know. How do you feel about that? We um, all have to do the best that we can. No, you don't. Why, why don't you go live on a farm and not use the fruits of the working class? And just What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back here on a new video. Today, we're going to be checking out Master Student learns how bad socialism can really get. Okay, this is going to be really, really amazing. This is by Charlie Kirk. I call him Charlie Kick. We call him Kicking Us. Let's get right into this video. I know, I've seen the uh, socialism side, so. Yeah, well, I, I don't like your ideology. I don't know about oh, you. You seem like a nice enough person. Yeah. Your ideas are practically evil, but that's okay. Oh, well, same for you. Okay, tell me why. What? Tell me why. Capitalism is a vampire. I don't know. Is so it what? I said that capitalism is a dead vampire that feeds on the blood of the working class. Capitalism is a deadly vampire that feasts on the blood of the working class. Yeah. Hmm. Can you elaborate on that? For me? Um, I don't really want to right now, but like, because like, do you, do you have an, do you have an iPhone? I was, yeah. So you're you're feasting on the blood of the working class. How dare you? Yeah, I know. How do you feel about that? We um all have to do the best that we can. Uh, no, you don't. Why, why don't you go live on a farm and not use the fruits of the working class <laughs> and just be a socialist with your friends? Why why use the fruits of the free market? <laughs> Isn't that kind of hypocritical? No, because the free market is so pervasive, we have, like, no choice but to eat. No, like I said, you could go live on a farm by yourself, like the Amish do, or like socialists in Vermont do, but yet you choose to live in a free market society and benefit from it, and use the heat and the light and the well-being and the medicine and the food all as a byproduct of a market-based society. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love it, but... Oh, you love it, but you said it's a vampire sucking the blood of the working class, so isn't that a little contradictory? What? What's your dad's opinion? My dad's opinion? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 18. Uh, what, what's your, is your dad the same situation as you? No. You no, he's, he's a Republican. Slightly, that's a good one. He's, he's, he's a Republican. Yeah, he's a Republican. Like, or, do, but no one's preventing, see here's the thing, no one's preventing you from living like a socialist. You can go do that. But your, your, your worldview would prevent me from living like an entrepreneur or like a capitalist. So inherently your ideology is built on control of other people's choices. Hmm. Ours is built on freedom. If you want to go live like a socialist, I have no problem with that. You can go start your own socialist colony in rural Utah, buy your own land and share your own water and share your own food. That's what's so amazing about voluntary societies, whereas what you talk about is a coercive society. I don't have that freedom to live how I want to live under the worldview that you espouse. And I think that's immoral. You're forcing them. And again, I don't believe in revolutionary socialism. I, believe uh, I didn't that. accuse you of that. You okay. said, you said Democrat believe, socialism. Yeah. Um, that's just the club that I'm with. Really, I'm, I'm fairly Marxist, honestly. Okay, like, we can, let's talk. That's just, that's just the club that I'm in. But I believe that eventually we will get to a state where enough people, we will collectively come together and say, hey, you know, this is better, you know, for all of us. I don't, I don't, obviously, with the world we live in today, like, socialism can't exist, like, like today in America. Like, I'm... I'm very pragmatic, you know, at, at my core. Okay. I'm like, I recognize that's so, never going to so happen. You, you said the Marxist thing. Can you give me an example where Marxism has ever worked? Yeah, no. Um, exactly. No, but that's because we part But it's been tried over a hundred times in the last hundred years, and it's never worked. It's an O for a hundred. And isn't that kind of concerning to you? Well, so the thing is, in a, in, a, in a Marxist state, you know, it's a, um, it's a state for its class, it's money, it's society. Yeah. Right, and so that, that's just utopia, man. I mean, that, that's no different than a fiction novel about Neverland. It's, it's been tried, and the results are hundreds of millions of people dead. But, but, that's, but that's ultimately what the true concept is, utopia. Right, so, so here's the question. You think utopia is attainable? I think it is, not in our lifetime. Okay. Have you read the Communist Manifesto? Yeah, and so I, I, I guess the struggle I have here is you espouse a viewpoint that has never worked, you think is never going to work in our lifetime, and never work in this country. That, that's no different than me believing in something of a work of fiction. But well, that doesn't mean that you can't work in your lifetime. 
So how would we go about working towards it? That's where the revolutionary component comes in, isn't it? Mm. So maybe you are a little more revolutionary than you admit it. I don't think I am. I think that like when you look over time and you see, you know, how societies have changed and how they've progressed and everything, I think that eventually we'll get to what I mean. Looking at the game, the side. Well, so let me ask you a question. Do you think some people are better at some things than others? Sure. Okay, so then in your utopian society, where would a smarter person fit in versus a not so smart person? Would there be hierarchies or no in your fictitious utopian Marxist My society? Fictitious, okay, yeah, we merge society. Well, at that point, automation will have taken over enough so that the amount of hype and the amount to what is to Are you familiar with this thinking? No, I'm very familiar. I, I'm the, trying the to deconstruct. Is that to, to no, tr trust me, I'm not, I'm not asking to okay. figure it out. I'm actually to deconstruct. I, I don't actually think he believes this. Well, I'm saying that, that uh, because of the modern age, there is a new variable, right, which is automation. Yeah. So very familiar with it. But that, that, that will never get rid of hierarchy. Yeah, so. for, for the 2020 election, there's, uh, what's the name? There's a candidate who believes in the... Uh, yeah, the Asian American guy. Yes. Very nice. You or something. But here's the thing. That, that are, if we tax Karl, Karl Marx argued that in the 1870s, and we've had huge automation, and we still have higher odds. Like, so no matter how hard you try, some people are going to work harder at certain things mm. and be more proficient at them than others, whether it be music, sports, sure. anything. In the fictitious Marxist society, you, it means the complete total abolition of any sort of hierarchy whatsoever. And so that's something you would believe in. Okay, so that's anti how we're actually built as people. Some people are taller, some people are smarter, some people have higher IQ, some people have better true, true. drive. Only in a market-based society are those differences able to elevate the standard of living for all people and actually make some sense of a broken world. And there's been so many times that Marx's fictitious utopian con communism has tried to be implemented. Over a short period of time, like the Paris onion, it falls apart. Do you know why? Because human beings are inherently selfish. And so if you try to build a commune, for example, after 20 days, you're going to have one guy saying, no, 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 I want two loaves of bread, not one. And he might be smart enough to be able to figure out how to do that. Then all of a sudden, there'll be a small subdivision that will break away from him and you have mm. commune. The only reason we have a civil society in the West is in order to get two loaves of bread in the West, you have to earn it. You can't take it away from somebody else. That's where Marxist utopian fictitious communism brings in. This is interesting. Thank you. I hope you learned something there. Damn, this this was beautiful. Uh, if I was a Marxist or a socialist, I definitely agree with Charlie Kirk. Yeah, then I was just turn capitalist. <laughs> the way he defined it, the way he he explained to the student, like any layman we understand. Because if you think about it, Charlie was like, uh, you believe in, in socialism means you should not um benefit in any any form of capitalism. You should just go and live in a farm. You should never benefit in the light, the water, the electricity, um, the iPhone you are using. You should never benefit in it. Just go live in the farm. Then the student was kind of like, kind of shy. He was kind of like feeling bad. But if you think about it, like it, it's it's true. Like it's it's true. Like you you know that socialism we can never be equal in in a certain way. We can never be equal. Also, um, Marxism, we can never be equal in any way. Um. One person is always smarter, one person is always taller, one person is always more clever, one person is always shorter. Like, it can never be equal. We can never end the same thing, we can never live the same thing. Like, it's it's it can never work. They have tried it several times. It still, it still can't function effectively. Unlike capitalism, like, you have to end it to get it. You understand? You, you you have to strive for it. It's not everyone that have that mind and strength that can strive for it. The people who are able to strive for it are the ones who get it. You understand? Or like masses masticism, like everyone can be equal. It's have never happened. Even in the uh, in the time of the Bible, it's it's never like that. It's never it's it's have never worked. That's why uh, I feel like masses people who are uh, masses like. I, I get the ideology, I get the um, belief, I get where they're coming from, but their ideology basically it can't be effective in the long run. In the world we are living right in now, socialism, um, masses, uh, masses, it can never work. Human beings as a whole, we are all selfish. We are selfish human beings. That is why this masses can never work. 
because when they are they keep on we are all equal okay we get this equally at a later on someone wants to get more than the other person probably five times probably six times so like ten times because as a human we are we are selfish but people don't want to admit it we are, we are basically a selfish being in a certain way so um then you start seeing like fights riots quarry issues then you start seeing break division that's why narcissism can never work so i love the student point of view i love how he was bold enough to come speak i love the courage i also the other guy who was um supporting the students i love his, his he also have the similar points of view with the students i love the entire discussion it was beautiful to listen to and also it enlightened me more like charlie enlightened me very very well in this video and i respect i respect the entire discussion guys comment down below what you think about this video give us a thumbs up share this video to as many as you can subscribe to our channel guys and we'll see you guys in the next video make sure you stay safe i just want a bag like a old lady i'm back wood smoking i don't own papers pass that 808 that don't don't shake her oh bitch you know i'm grinding like a pro skater baby mama bugging i'm so quick to hit ignore buku bitch in my bed i got scales